What's up guys and welcome to another installment of AA Computers and Technology. I apologize for the audio quality today. It's going to be a little bit weird because I have my phantom power supply sitting right here and it's not hooked up to the microphone and therefore I cannot use my uh, condenser microphone which is all the way up here and as you can see it's put off to the side because I am not using it. But today we're going to be taking a look at the Innogear i229 48 volt phantom power supply. And I made a video all about this uh, newer microphone kit. You could get this kit for 40 bucks off Amazon. It comes with almost everything you need except for a phantom power supply. And everyone was like, oh, do I need phantom power? You know, how does phantom power actually fit into the picture? How do I hook it up to the phantom power supply and output it to my PC or camera? Or do I need a soundboard? So I got like a million questions during that video and I hope to address them all in this video. Now to make a long story short, basically what this does is supply 48 volts to your condenser microphone. Now it's a very low noise 48 volts, so you're not getting a lot of distortion in the signal. Uh, and then once you have the microphone plugged into the input from here and the power supply is plugged in and on, you can pretty much output it to whatever you want, uh, whether it's a, a camera or a computer. Uh, you don't need a soundboard or anything unless you want a soundboard, so you can do all that stuff through software uh, once you have it running through here uh, and you can do that by using a XLR to 3.5 millimeter adapter which is what I use to record uh, sound for my microphone and I'll put it to my camera so you just plug that in here and then once the microphone is plugged into the input you can output it to once again either your computer or your camera or whatever your little heart desires so Let's take a closer look at what actually comes in this package. I picked this up from Amazon for $19.99. I can't unplug it now. There we go. And this is pretty much what came in the box. You have a step down transformer right here, the actual power supply itself and in the box, which is pretty plain. There's nothing much here and I'm not gonna read anything off because it's all pretty obvious. So I'm just gonna put that off to the side. So we are taking a closer look at the Phantom Power Supply right now. I'm sorry about this Velcro on here. This is actually part of my setup and it's blocking the logo, so I apologize for that. Uh, I have this hooked up right under my desk and I'll show you how I have everything hooked up in just a minute so you guys can get a better idea of where exactly this Phantom Power Supply is going to fit into your setup. But I've kind of already spoiled a couple things already. I went over some stuff, but I'll go over it again. We have the input right here, so this is where you're gonna plug in your microphone. There's a nice little quick release button right here. It feels great. Uh, the microphone output is right here. As I said, you could use a XLR to XLR cable or you could just use a uh, XLR to 3.5 millimeter cable and hook it up to like, uh, say, your computer, your camera, or heck, you could even use it for uh, karaoke if you wanted to. And here is the input for your step-down transformer right here. Uh, it's using a, uh, I think that's a 2.5 millimeter plug. I could be wrong about that. I didn't measure it. It just looks like that off the bat. Uh, just eyeballing it right there and that plugs in right there. And then on the back, you have your blue LED and then the nice clunky on and off switch right here. Uh, and the unit itself feels really great. It's, uh, I believe the outer uh, shell is made out of aluminum. It's pretty light, um, but it still feels nice and strong. It's not like it bends to your hands or anything. Uh, but who cares about how it feels? I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, because if it doesn't perform well, the feel doesn't really matter. So I'm going to plug it into my microphone right now and give you a sample of the actual audio output from this thing. Okay, so I've now switched over to my Pentax Q. My Nikon D3300 is sitting right here, and I want to show you guys how I have the Phantom power supply hooked up in my setup. So I have the microphone right here. Here is the XLR cable running from the microphone. And by the way, the power supply itself doesn't come with any cables at all, so you are going to have to go out and buy all the cables that you need. Uh, in my case, with this setup, I have a uh, XLR or a female XLR to male XLR cable. It's about uh, eight feet, I think. And then, I, of course, I have the uh, XLR to 3.5 millimeter audio cable right here. And this is gonna go from the power supply and into the camera. So let me show you what exactly to do. So at this point, I have that big wall wart uh, plugged into an outlet, and that is in turn running to the power supply. It's not on yet. Gonna go ahead and plug the microphone into the input section of the power supply and it should snap right into place and I'm going to take my 3.5 millimeter to uh, XLR audio cable right here and plug that in as well. And this setup is a, a bit awkward because of the cable placement. I'm just going to take this. I have it zip tied up just to keep things neat. I'm going to untangle this and stretch this cable out. And I'm just going to run it right into my camera. Just going to flip the power supply on. 
that blue LED should turn on with the power supply. I'm going to turn my camera on. I'm going to go into the menus and make sure all of the audio levels are set properly. So menu, uh, video mode, or not video mode, movie settings. And then I want to make sure the microphone sensitivity is turned to the right level, which in this case would be 7. There we go, and now I'm going to go ahead and move over to my D3300. And that's really all there is to it. I am now using the condenser microphone. It's running through the phantom power supply and into my camera, and the setup would be pretty much the same for a PC as well. So for 60 bucks, you can have a pretty decent and easy to use audio setup. Both of these are on Amazon and I will include both of the links to the newer microphone kit and the inner gear of power supply, Inno, Inno gear power supply in the description. You can go ahead and check those out. And I'm actually really interested to see what's inside this thing. There's obviously a really big capacitor in here because once you uh, turn it off, that LED stays on for quite a while. And for some reason, there was a lot of complaints about that in the uh, Amazon uh, review section. I have no idea why people even cared about that fact. But anyway, uh, you guys are going to get a little bonus content. I'm going to go ahead and tear this down during this video, so stay tuned. And that was actually really easy to take apart. All I had to do was remove the four screws on the front face plate and the entire assembly right here just slid right out of the case. So the case is really just a uh, hollow shell, nothing else in there. And you can see the primary board right here. You can see a uh, what looks like a voltage regulator right here. Do I have my screwdriver? There it is. And then there is a ton or are a ton of capacitors all over this board. Uh, not really a reputable name brand. I, I think all of these are... Um, uh, Chong X capacitors. So, I mean, I actually have used these before. Uh, they're they're uh, cheaper and easy to get. So I use these a lot in uh, a lot of my projects. I'm not sure if any of you guys have actually seen uh, the uh, Chong X capacitors in there, but I do use these and I never had any problems with them. So, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, they're, they're okay. Uh, you can see a bunch of resistors all over the board. Uh, you can see that big clunky power switch right here. I'm going to go ahead and bring out my magnifying glass so we can go into ghetto, mic uh, ghetto macro mode. Oh, I found it. Now we can take a closer look at everything and you can see that all the components have a nice corresponding silk screen right next to them. So that's going to make things pretty easy when you actually need to repair the board. Uh, and speaking of repairing the board, I mean, this thing's going to last for a long time because one, it's really easy to take uh, this entire assembly out of the case. So it's going to be pretty easy to repair this if something ever goes wrong. I mean, the board itself is pretty simple, uh, nothing too complicated here. So basically, if something goes wrong, pretty much uh, all you're going to have to do is replace a uh, through hole component, either a resistor or a capacitor or maybe that voltage regulator, uh, but nothing too expensive and nothing too hard to do. Um, and you're going to know what goes where because everything is nicely labeled. You can see the blue LED here. There's nothing much on the board, so I'm going to try to talk about anything really interesting I see, but there's nothing too interesting. Uh, so I'm just going to give you guys a nice view of everything. We're going to pan around here a couple times, flip it over, take a look at the soldering work, and then we'll put this thing back together. I'm going to flip this bad boy over. I see that the board itself and the solder work uh, actually will look pretty good. So I don't have any problems with the assembly of this at all. It looks very nice and clean. On a normal day of recording, this is how everything would be set up. The Phantom power supply is concealed under my desk, so it's Velcro to the bottom of my desk. It's right there, it's plugged into the microphone, and then the output would be running right to my camera. Uh, but as I am not sitting at my desk, I don't have it plugged in just yet, but I am about to. There we go. Once again, I am recording through the Phantom Power Supply in conjunction with my condenser microphone. So that's going to be about it for this overview and teardown. Overall, I feel like this is a great Phantom Power Supply for anyone who just wants to jump right into the world of high quality audio. Really easy to use, one of the cheapest ones out there, but the quality does not suffer uh, from the very low price as you saw when I took it apart. Uh, quality is still great, uh, even though this is one of the cheapest ones out there. For some reason, they don't dip below uh, 20 bucks. So uh, this one's sitting right around that mark. 
mark at $19.99. Go ahead, pick it up from Amazon. Link will be in the description. Once again, if you want to check out this microphone as well, the uh, link for the overview and the link for the product will both be in the description. So uh, that's going to be about it. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and post a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video. If you didn't like something about this video, please tell me what it was and why. And of course, please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next episode of A Computers and Technology.